Hello everyone, and welcome back to Rocket Team. I'm Thomas E. Wagle. And I'm Severin E. Crowley. Today's lesson, we'll be discussing Lesson 2, Stability and Recovery. Our lesson will cover the recovery systems, which will have the types, our parachute formula, the variables within that formula, and how to calculate for our diameter of canopy. Fluids, turbulent versus laminar flow, cover our center of gravity, center of pressure, and then will culminate with a stability demo. And now I'll be followed by Mr. Thomas E. Laybourne in discussing our fluid flow. As you may remember from our discussions of states of matter, the three most common states of matter, solids, liquids, and gases here on Earth, only have two which are considered fluids. Fluids exist where particles can flow past one another. Solids, of course, are not fluids because they remain rigid. They have a fixed shape and a fixed volume. Fluids like liquids and gases flow around. For a model rocket, we're most concerned about flow of gases, specifically air. The two types of flows that you can have are laminar flow or turbulent flow. As the particles go around your rocket, it's more favorable and more stable for your rocket if you have a design which is smooth and facilitates the particles going around your rocket. If you see on the right hand side of this, or your left, left hand side to you, right to me. It's smooth, you have a nice uh, nose cone shape which is very aerodynamic and you have this swept delta fin in the back. And you can see how the particles will flow easily past it. On the other side of the rocket, where it is blue, you can see you have more severe shapes on the rocket. You have the launch lugs sticking out and you can see how the flow is turbulent. The turbulent flow inhibits the stability of your rocket and can cause it to actually crash. It is not favorable for optimum performance of your rocket. I will be followed by Mr. Crotton, who will discuss center of gravity and center of pressure. If we look right over here is our center of gravity. The symbol for it is this circular shape with a crosshair and its opposite sides coated in. Our center of gravity is fairly easy to locate on a rocket. All we need to have is a straight edge, and we need to have a rocket. It's very important that you understand that to determine your center of gravity, you need to have your rocket loaded and ready to fire, which means that you need to have the engine and the payload if your rocket is intended to carry that, because those two items can drastically affect the center of gravity within the, the rocket. Next, we talk about our center of pressure. Center of pressure symbol is a simple circle with an enclosed dot in the center. The center of pressure is also very easy to determine with a really simple process where we take our rocket and trace it onto a piece of cardboard. We then take our cardboard cutout of the rocket and we locate its center of gravity. However, we label that center of gravity with its symbol for center of pressure. The point at which its center of gravity shows us the center of pressure for the rocket that we've traced. Now that we understand center of gravity and center of pressure and how to locate them, now we can start to talk about how to determine if the rocket will be stable or unstable in flight. Right here we have two simple diagrams. For an unstable rocket, unfavorable, you will have your center of pressure in front of the center of gravity. If you have the center of pressure in front of the center of gravity, the rocket will not fly properly. Our next diagram, you'll notice that the two points have been flipped. By putting the center of gravity ahead of the center of pressure, we get a very stable rocket in flight. I'll now be followed by Mr. Thomas Laybourne in our recovery systems. There are several types of recovery systems which are used in model rocketry. You have the featherweight system, streamer, parachute, rotary wing, glider, and ornithopter. The featherweight system doesn't use any actual dedicated recovery system inside the rocket. The rocket is so light and has so little mass that it, when it strikes the ground at it during its descent, it won't be damaged. The second most common that you'll see with model rockets is going to be a streamer. A streamer is simply a ribbon or a piece of fabric which is laced in there and just, it's a streamer. The drag that the rocket encounters during its recovery descent prevents it from being broken when it hits the ground. 
as it goes past the air and incurs drag. One of the more common ones, and certainly the technique that we'll be using for our TARC rocket, is going to be a parachute. Parachutes are very reliable and easy to construct, and they can be adjusted easily based off of your design. This is going to be one of the constraints which we artificially place on you. We want you to use a parachute. There's also the rotary wing uh, method, which has actual wings inside your rocket, and when it reaches apogee and then goes through its uh, ejection point, the wings actually come out and it rotates down, auto-rotating like a helicopter until it gets to the ground. You will also occasionally see gliders where wings pop out or they're part of the rocket and it glides back to Earth, or one of my favorites, the ornithopter, which mimics the flapping motion of a bird as the rocket returns. These are very complicated and that's why we're going to stick with using a parachute. The next thing we'll be covering is our parachute formula. For right now, for this lesson, we will not be using it. We're simply introducing it so you understand what it looks like and what some of the variables we'll be discussing are. We will be using this in later lessons, especially when we design and construct our parachute. Your parachute formula. S, which is the area of your parachute, times 2G, the acceleration and gravity, times mass, which is the mass of your rocket at ejection, all divided by the Greek letter rho, which is going to be your air density times the coefficient of drag times velocity squared. S equals 2gm all over rho c sub d times v squared. Here's what those variables mean. F, v is your descent velocity. This is the velocity you want your rocket to hit the ground at so it isn't destroyed. Mass. The mass of your rocket is going to be measured in grams. Don't forget, the mass that you're using is going to be its mass after ejection. That means after all the rocket fuel has been burnt and its ejection charge has detonated. S. S is the area of your parachute canopy. That is the area of the parachute. G is the acceleration due to gravity here on Earth. On Earth, the acceleration due to gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared. This is a constant, which you won't have to change unless you go to a different planet, and we're not gonna be doing that. We'll be staying here on Earth for right now. You so, might, though. <laughs> rho, this isn't a P, I don't know it looks like it. It's the Greek letter rho. Rho is your air density. We are using the air density uh, the numerical value for air density at sea level because we're going to be competing in Washington, at Washington, D.C., which is at sea level, not here in Missouri. That number is 1,225 grams per meters cubed. Lastly, our coefficient for drag, C sub D. This is another constant, and it's based off of fluid flow for air. The coefficient of drag that you will be using is 0 0.75. You'll use all of these variables to determine the size of your parachute. You'll use then your size of parachute value to put into the diameter of your canopy. The diameter of your canopy is determined with this formula. D equals 4S, all divided by pi. The value for pi is 3.1416. However, 3.14 is an acceptable value. And now we will go into our stability demo so we can help you to visualize an unstable platform with the center of pressure in, center, in front of the center of gravity versus a stable platform where the center of gravity is in front of the center of pressure. So, Mr. Laybourne now will give us our demonstration about a stable rocket. In a stable rocket, we have our center of gravity in front of the center of pressure. Notice that as he swings the rocket around, immediately the nose starts to leave the fins around just as you would expect a rocket to travel. Now, you'll see a demonstration 
of an unstable rocket. Mr. Kropman is taking a rocket where we have artificially changed the center of gravity. In an unstable rocket, the center of gravity will be behind the center of pressure. Here you can see that the rocket is doing all sorts of non-rockety things. The fins are leading the nose cone, which is unacceptable for stability. The center of pressure is where you have balance, and if it is not, if, if it is not behind the center of gravity, the rocket will not have good stability. <laughs> hey, keep on going with your uh, journey for getting to TARP. We're going to win this thing. Continue to take your notes and make sure that you're taking your time and actually doing some independent study as well. We're really impressed with what we've seen so far. And this concludes lesson two for Rocket Club. Add Astra. Astra. All right, that was good. <laughs>